Hello, my dear ones. I have absolutely no idea if we'll end up posting this video. This may be one of those Fridays when um, we simply go into hiding and we hope nobody's going to notice that we haven't posted anything. The very simple uh, human reality is that we are all very, very tired. We are getting close to being exhausted. It is almost the end of the summer for us. End of July means the end of our pilgrimages. It also means that we've been working since springtime on everything that has happened at the monastery in terms of building, in terms of renovation, reparation, and getting the houses ready for the long, dark, wet winters of the Hebrides. So if anything, this video is going to be about pushing through exhaustion and um, doing the work you have to do out of a sense of uh, discipline and work ethics and and really a bit of an update on what's happened during the summer at the monasteries. First of all, um, I need to apologize for the setting. I do try usually to find a nice beautiful setting for you. This time, however, um, you are in my luxurious <laughs> apartment, uh, which also doubles as our um, pottery workshop. We are learning how to make pots and hopefully by the end of um, the winter we'll be able to start selling them. That in that corner is my chest of drawers where I keep my clothes. And that is my bed for the summer. I'm basically in the shed. And those are some of the pots we've um, finished this week. Um, after we finish our daily trips with uh, everyone and uh, we are back at the monastery and after we say our prayers and after we have dinner together and we talk and uh, everybody's ready for bed the monk comes back to the shed and starts making pots um, I'll tell you about that probably a lot more in the future because it is a wonderful discipline to keep one awake at night um, and so keep one's prayer alive. But what has happened during the summer? Well, first of all, I need to thank all our pilgrims because they've kept us alive. Today we are going to Inch Kenneth, which is the island of St. Kenneth, where he lived as a hermit and also where a small monastery was formed around him. And it will be our last uh, trip of the summer and probably the last time we go to Inch Kenneth this year, because we can only get to these places during our organized summer pilgrimages. And on the way back, we hope to stop and see the island of Staffa with the beautiful, frighteningly beautiful Fingal's Cave and um, the, you know, the, the glorious um, rock formations uh, created around Staffa. We might even get to see cormorants and puffins and um, gannets and all sorts of uh, seabirds. But this will be the last day. During these pilgrimages, as we were taking care of our guests and as they were taking care of us in many, many instances, thank you very much for being so kind to us. Uh, at Kilninian, we've managed to take down one of the old garages and we've simply rebuilt it and we've rebuilt it as a uh, trapeza, which um, means a dining room for our pilgrims. Uh, we've replaced everything from the foundations to the walls to everything. It's a new build um, by the grace of God. And it's, it's just beautiful. It's tiny, but it will allow us to probably welcome about 15 people, maybe even more so that uh, all, after all our services, uh, daily services, Sunday Divine Liturgy, whenever we get uh, people s visiting with us, we can invite them to also stay with us for uh, lunch or at least for some tea and, um, and coffee. 
it's something that as a, as a Moldavian monk, I feel uh, a deep responsibility to be able to offer. But at the same time, I don't like inviting people whom we don't really know into uh, the monastery itself, into the house where the sisters, uh, the mothers are living. So we are going to decorate the inside with icons. We are going to install some tables in here. It's beautifully lit. There are windows everywhere. There are windows in the ceiling. There are windows to the sides. So it will be a joy to welcome, welcome people here when the work is finally done. And then while we were working on the on the trapeze on the dining room, we've also started the work in the loft, in the attic um, of one of the houses where mothers are living. So the attic is going to be split uh, so that we have more uh, living space uh, there and also more workshop space, which we are in desperate need of. This will allow us to welcome new people, uh, new sisters who are testing their vocation before dedicating themselves to, to Christ and to monastic life. And it will also allow our mothers to have their own uh, cells, their own rooms, because at the moment we have three bedrooms and four sisters, which is not quite uh, appropriate for monastic life. So as you can see, um, there will be four dormers that will be installed. They are already built already and uh, that will bring in a lot of natural light <clears throat> which is very very helpful given where we live. It will also provide with a beautiful window looking out towards the ocean for the sisters living in the loft. Inside we've done our absolute best to use um, the best insulation that we could buy. I think it's um, yeah as high in terms of regulation as it can get because the house is very cold and because the winters are very cold and uh, windy as well. So God willing, when all is done, <clears throat> we shall have more space for mothers, more space to welcome new sisters and also new space for when you come and you visit for us to give you a nice cup of tea and maybe a nice cake um, just to say hello and to express that you are welcome and you are loved in Christ whenever you come and visit us. What else have we done? We've done a lot of things. On Iona we've been trying to find workers and I think we'll find we we'll found someone who will come in in about a month's time to replace pretty much the heating system in the house, the heat heating system which is connected with the cooking system and the hot water system is collapsed so we have no heating uh, in the Iona monastery at the moment but thank God it's still summer so it's been all right but um, we are going to have to repair it otherwise it will be quite challenging to be here during the winter also, the iconostasis will come in about two weeks' time, the new final iconostasis for Kilninian. So it, there's been a lot of work going on in these two, three months while we're also running our pilgrimages. But by the grace of God, everything progressed the way we were hoping and praying it would. I am publicly asking for your support. If anybody out there can help us, please help us. Only the work at Kilninian only the work for the trapeza and for the conversion of the loft into more living space and uh, workshop space, that's about 270,000 pounds. Um, so it was an extremely courageous decision to go ahead and do the work. But we all know, it's very visible, that this monastery will only grow to the extent to which we work and uh, you support us and there is almost a physical need for this monastery to to grow both on Mal and on Iona there are so many people who who I it's pointless let's just say that there is a very clear need for orthodox monastic orthodox presence in the islands and we are so grateful so grateful that God has um, chosen us to do this work. 
which is why although I was telling you we are all exhausted, we are also so grateful to be exhausted doing the work of God, doing the work that we know contributes to the salvation of many other human lives. It gives purpose to our lives. It gives meaning to our lives. And we know that in the kingdom there is a tiny drop of... Um, there's a fruit of our, um, of our passing through this life. It's our work. It is your support. It is God's blessing. This is how things are accomplished here and in the kingdom. I pray that by next week I shall be a bit more rested so I can start addressing your comments and your questions again. Until then, God bless you beyond your belief and beyond your hopes. And please keep us in your prayers as well. Amen, my dear ones. Amen. Amen.